Welcome to all the VIPs. We want to give you a special thanks for being our VIPs. You know how good the value is here at ICCCon, and you're going to get pie tomorrow or someday soon, so you, 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 it's worth the pie. So I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to spend too much time uh, with housekeeping up here because I know what you're all here uh, to do and see. So let's just get it out of the way. Please give a warm welcome for Mr. Warwick Davis. <laughs> Welcome. Good to see you, Warren. Please have a seat. Oh, well, hello. So you're VIPs, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so you paid a long while to be here. I've got another name for you, Gullible. <laughs> anyway, welcome everyone, hello. Now, thank you for being here. So this is a private audience. This is a private audience. What do they expect for that? We're going to just be very casual. So I'll keep my clothes on, can I? <laughs> for now, yes. for now. We, we can change that later. Um, uh, once, once that door closes, we can, we can do whatever we want. Uh, so we'll keep this nice and casual. We want to have a little conversation with the audience. I'm not going to talk too much. We have a full interview with Warwick Davis and Kevin Lyle on Saturday that you're not going to want to miss. Who's Kevin Lyle? Oh, you'll... You'll, so you'll see. see. I'll see. Oh, you'll see. You, you can't wait. He sounds quite ominous. Uh, he's certainly <laughs> Is ominous. Is he an just an interviewer? He, he's just an interviewer, but uh, but he's he, he's done quite a few in his time. I so mean, you'll you'll love Kevin. Don't worry. Is he on television? Um, on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> he's very famous uh, with about three or four people on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> so forward to seeing uh, Kevin Lyle. Is that his name? Yes, yes, uh, yes. The famous Kevin Lyle. He, he will not let you forget it. No. Not at all. Not the name. Not the name. Not the name. I and don't it. forget names, do I? Don't no. No, Mr. Davis, Davis, Davis never forgets names. <laughs> we, we actually had this discussion uh, backstage. Uh, he and I both never forget names or faces. No. So, does anybody have a question? Uh, I've got a microphone roaming around the audience. If you have any questions, just raise your hand and we'll get started. Oh, come on, somebody's got to have a question to start this thing off. Everyone's nervous at the beginning. There's a young wizard at the back. Who's this? Uh, uh, I'm Gage. Hey, Gage, how are you? Hi. Uh, how did you get your first big break as an actor? Are you asking me because you want to be an actor or you're just intrigued? Just asking. Okay. So, um, I thought everyone knew this story, Gage, but um, my grandmother was listening to the radio in 1980 and Lucasville put out an announcement and they were saying we need little people to play in the new Star Wars movie. They didn't say what, but she heard the word little person and Star Wars and knew that I was short and knew I loved Star Wars, so told my mum about this advert and um, she phoned up the studios and they said, oh, we've got everyone we need. So I don't know whether mum offered them cash, but she got me a meeting at the studios in London. <laughs> and I went up and uh, met with a production secretary who said, um, uh, do you like Star Wars? And I went, yeah. That's me when I was 11. I looked just the same and sounded like that. And she said, um, do you uh, want to play an Ewok? I said, what's one of them? She said, well, you're going to find out in a minute when you get measured off for a costume. And that was it. Three weeks later, I was on the set of Star Wars and I haven't looked back since. So there you go, simple. So everyone needs a lucky break and that was mine. Thanks for your question, Gage, thank you. Who else has a question? Don't be shy. There we go. Gage's dad. Hey, Gage's dad. <laughs> Outside of film, do you have any hobbies or interests that would surprise your friends? Not that I could say this room. Very surprising. <laughs> um, let me think now. Hobbies or interests? I don't have much time for anything, really. Um, I do spend most of my time working, uh, which is uh, which I'm very lucky to be able to do. Um, what else do I do? I like a bit of cooking. Uh, sounds a bit sad, doesn't it? I don't do much else or work. <laughs> a bit of writing, um, some photography. Um, that's kind of it, really. Um, what did you expect? Anything? <laughs> well, I've, I've written an autobiography about sort of 10 years ago. So I need to do a new one because lots has happened since then. Obviously, I wrote Life's Too Short along the way as well. Um, yeah, there's always something I'm kind of trying to cook up. I have loads of ideas, but I don't always have the time to follow them through. So uh, they just sit there, and then someone else does it, and I go, oh, I could have been rich. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. 
I think that's how Elon Musk farted. So, <laughs> so thanks for that, Gage's dad. So what else do we have from anyone else? Sorry, it's over to you, David. No, no worries, we've got one there. Uh, there is a hand at the last minute eventually. I met you earlier, didn't I? Yeah, uh, I'm Navo. Uh, Hello. Hello. Uh, my question is, do you have like a distinct uh, or favorite, favorite story um, or memory you have from working on the Star Wars set or like a particular interaction with a certain person? Okay. Uh, my interactions with um, the cast on Jedi were probably my most memorable. Um, you know, working with um, Harrison, Mark, and Carrie. Because I was only 11, I didn't understand when you're on a film set, you don't just wander up to the biggest names in the movie and just chat to them between takes. So I just would wander up and say, hey Mark, can I see your lightsaber? That's not a euphemism, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, hey, yeah, sure. So I'd be able to have a look at that. And uh, Carrie would obviously be very motherly towards me. She was worried when I got hot in the costume. Um, so yeah, those guys probably had the, um, had the biggest impact on me. Um, another Star Wars memory for me was working on, um, I was trying to think which movie it was. Um, I think it was um, episode seven. So I'm back in Star Wars again. I could barely see through the creature eye. I had this very tiny kind of perspective. And I, the bit that I caught was, they brought out the clapperboard, which said Star Wars, episode seven on it. And that's all I could see just before the taking off. Like, wow, I'm actually back doing this again after all these years. My career's gone nowhere. <laughs> and that was fabulous, you know. Anytime I got to work on a Star Wars movie, it was actually terrific. And um, another favorite moment of mine was um, in, uh, in Solo when I got to remove the helmet of Weasel and kind of reveal it was me. You wouldn't believe the amount of angst that went into that moment. You know, they were like, okay, action. And there was stuff going on before that moment, and so I would always be listening to the other actors waiting for the reveal. And I wanted it to look really cool. So as I took it off my my hair to kind of flop down and to like look cool doing it. And uh, fortunately, it kind of felt okay. You never believe how difficult it is just to take a helmet off it on camera. Uh, but yeah, I did that and uh, enjoyed that moment as well. And also the first time I fired a blaster on a Star Wars movie. They said, Warren, we've got a selection of blasters for you um, as Weasel. And they were all lined up on this table. And what did I pick? I picked the biggest one they had. So when I stood next to it, it was like my height. Um, but didn't realize I would have to shoot this thing one day. And it was hard enough to kind of lift, kind of horizontal. But then, yeah, they put blanks in it so that flame comes out the end. And uh, so I got to shoot that and uh, blow up some baddies, which was fun. So yeah, that was one of the highlights for me, or a couple of highlights from Star Wars. Thanks for your question, thank you. Now I'm gonna sit back on this chair. And you know what, whenever I sit back on chairs, I worry that I may have trodden in something. Because everyone seems to bomb in my feet. Any suspect things on my shoes? No, nice and clean. Perfectly clean. I haven't been near any dogs, which is good. <laughs> okay, so what do we got? I'm going to ask the next one while our uh, uh, microphone gentleman gets in line. Uh, I'm curious what it was like after Return of the Jedi when you went back to school with your classmates. Well, you know, believe it or not, I didn't brag about it at all. I didn't mention it. I just, because if you did, you got pummeled at school. So I just wouldn't say anything particularly. But there was one kid who was a, he was a particular fanatic of Carrie Fisher. And so he'd just be asking me, what's Carrie like? What's Mark like? What's Harrison like? Just kind of followed me and pestered me. And eventually he became my best friend. If you can't beat him, join him. I couldn't put him off any longer. So, um, so yeah, that was it. I didn't mention it at the school. Uh, only when I was asked. They eventually found out, though. Oh, they found out, but I didn't go bragging. Never. All right, I don't it? now. Look at how low-key I am about all this stuff. <laughs> so you've been able to bless the world with a number of uh, amazing characters. Uh, do you have any, even outside of roles you've played, that you consider your favorite characters? And second of all, many of us are here as toy collectors. Yeah. Have you, do you ever, do you collect any of toys from things you've been a part of? Well, firstly, I, mean, I didn't used to collect anything, but somehow recently I've become very sentimental. Hmm. So over the last year I've started collecting kind of memorabilia from characters I've played. So I've got quite a good collection of pop figures now. Lego minifigures, the kind of wicket that Swarovski did recently. I've got that. Um, I've got some nice bits in my office. I have shelves now just for those things. Like a little more shrine. 
and make my family bow to it every day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was at a convention recently, somebody gave me, they were a Perspex kind of artist. They created this kind of work of art with all my images inside of it. And uh, so I've got that on the wall, along with some covers of magazines that I've been in. And yeah, so it's a nice little collection now. And even at this event, I've been given a few little things, some stickers, some wicket, a little very tiniest wicket I've ever seen, about that big. Um, some wicket plushes I'm collecting now. My minifigure collection is, is very important to me because I think I'm the actor with the most minifigures. Huh. I think there's like seven or eight now, wow. including droids and stuff. So I'm pretty impressed with that. I like that one. That's amazing. And there's a very famous photograph of you with uh, a group of action figures that I believe George Lucas gave to you. At well, they were actually given to me by Mark Hamill. Oh, so, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, Mark on the set of Jedi said, Warwick, do you uh, have any toys from Star Wars? I said, yeah. He said, well, make a list of things you need or for your collection and I'll see what I can do. Wow. So rather embarrassingly, I filled two letter-sized sheets of paper with a list. <laughs> and I presented that to Mark the next day, who had a rather surprised look on his face when I gave it to him. <laughs> and said, <clears throat> okay, I'll see what I can do. A couple of days later, we came in with two huge boxes from Kenner. And inside one of them was the Millennium Falcon, oh, which I could almost get in, it was so big. <laughs> uh, and uh, all the action figures on R4, plus the Darth Vader carrying case for all the figures, which I still have today. That's cool. That was really cool. Yeah. Fantastic. There's a fantastic image that you can probably find online. Yeah, there is an image of me with all the figures laid down on a grass. Layer. I used to photograph them in my sandpit, <laughs> which was cool, with my 110 format camera. So they were all out of focus. I don't know where they did it in America, but in the UK, if you sent a film off to be developed, they'd stick a sticker on it saying, poor quality or out of focus. It's, like, it's pretty fucking obvious. <laughs> Sorry to swear, but it is funny when you swear. <laughs> this is private and it's not going anywhere oh, on Facebook, so we're good. That's awesome. <laughs> you, you didn't know it get raunchy today, did you? <laughs> we got one up front here. So you have a, you've had an extraordinary career, still do. Out of you all this, this yet. No, right. <laughs> so who, what would you want to do in the future, and who is an actor or actress that you would most certainly want to act with? Yeah. What do I want to do in the future? As little as possible. <laughs> um, no, I, I still enjoy acting, although it is much harder work nowadays. Um, I'd love to work with Will Ferrell. Mm. I, I, I think he's just a funny person. Yeah. You know, when somebody doesn't have to do much and they're just funny, I just enjoy that brand of humour that he, he kind of has. Um, so, but I've done everything else, really. What else is bucket list? Um, Done Top Gear, the, the motor show in the UK. Done Doctor Who. Um, they were my bucket list things. Um, what else? Oh, Marvel. Nothing in Marvel yet. But there's nothing left. Everyone's done everything. <laughs> Are there any little characters you know of? Any I can play? Suggestions? Who knows Marvel? We got, a, we got a Marvel suggestion. That's, that's Shout it out. Howard the Duck. <laughs> that's the only one I can think I've been of. done. That's, that's Disney now. It's uh, no, that was Lucas. Uh, now it's Disney. Yeah. Yeah, he tried that already, didn't he? Mickey Mouse owns everything now. <laughs> so not Howard. Let's not do him. I've come up with my own character though. Oh, go ahead, please do share. He's um, he's a he's Captain Short Ass. <laughs> so he can get into small spaces, rescue people, do those sort of things. Mini Deadpool. Mini Deadpool. Oh, mini Deadpool. Yeah. There's, a, there's a dead dog, isn't there? Exactly. What's his name? Dogpool. Dog so, <laughs> so then why does that happen? Then? Why am I suddenly a mini one? We've got to explain it. How can I, how can I pitch that to Marl and just say, I don't know why, it's just mini. It just is, because I'm desperate for work. I can't say that. And they'll pay me pittance. Okay, well, just think on this while we're doing the rest of the Q&A, shall we? And come back to it. We'll come back to that. Yeah, good. We've got a question in the back. Yeah, um, I've followed your career for a long, long time. We're about the same age, and I was Where wondering... Where are you? I can't see you. <laughs> right here. Over there. Basically... Who looks better? We're about the same age. <laughs> <laughs> we, um... They can't answer that. One of my favorite actors 
yep. uh, growing up was Billy Barty, and you got to work with him in Willow. I was just yeah. wondering if you have any recollections about him, you know, that you can tell us about. Well, to me, he was like the um, the epitome of what I want to achieve in my career. I mean, very well respected actor. He'd done some lovely character roles. He also founded the Little People of America organization, which I kind of went on to found a UK version of the similar charity as well with my wife. Um, yeah, Billy was kind of a hero, and it was great to work with him and watch him work as well. Uh, so yeah, much respect for Billy. Thank you for the question. Thank you. We got one over here in, oh, in the, in the middle of the, the gallery. Um, so two parts. First, kind of goes back to the Deadpool thing. Uh, title of Deadpool 4 could be Honey, I Shrink the Deadpool. Oh. That's pretty good. I like Ooh. that. Um, and then secondly, there's a lot of candid photos of you from back in Return of the Jedi, like with Carrie, where, you know, where you have part of your costume on. Um, do you have any favorite memories or um, anything to do with her? Yeah, one of my favorite images that you, you kind of probably allude to there is me. I'm sitting on Jabba's tail. She's kind of hanging out next to Jabba. And I'm just looking all the young and innocent sitting there. Just a very candid photo that we took. Because I just wandered into the set one day to have a look at what they were up to. And we got this lovely black and white picture of me and Carrie. Um, but yeah, I've got nothing but fond memories of working on that production. So what was the other part of your question, sorry? Well, just if you have, I don't know, any memories specifically with her. Um, well, mainly the memory of her being worried about me being in the costume. So I'd take the head off and she'd be like, would you like some chocolate milk? Would you like some cookies? I was like, I would eat chocolate milk and cookies. And I think I kind of conned onto this at an 11 year old boy. And every time I took the head off, I used to act as if I was more hot than I actually was. <laughs> what I do is carry me right there with chocolate milk and cookies. And it worked every time. Actually, she was like, I've got a great image as well, a candid image, that my mum and dad took at the, the Jedi rap party in Oregon. So it was a late night party. So I'd sit in the chair like this and I'd fall asleep. And then there's a photo of me asleep, Carrie behind me going, shh, like that. It was a beautiful photo. Right over here in the corner. Yes, two-part question. So you mentioned Mark and having your own collection, and many of us in the room have come to meet you to get autographs. Super awesome. Uh, two questions. Number one, what's the weirdest thing anyone has ever asked you to inscribe on an item? And number two, if I was to come to you tomorrow through your autograph line and say, put something on, what's something you've always wanted to sign on someone's mm -hmm. item in some way, shape, or form and never had the opportunity to? <laughs> oh, gosh. You realize you have to get to him first thing in the line, otherwise somebody else is gonna do it first. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me think about it. I'm not terribly keen on signing body parts, I will say that. That will feel a bit weird. You know, a lot of people say they're gonna get that tattooed on them. I'm like, well, I don't wanna be right there. <laughs> no one's ever going to see it. I'll leave you to figure out what this is. <laughs> I know the weirdest like message. Um, I mean, mainly they're around the Leprechaun sort of series of films. They want me to write rude things about drugs, gangsters, swear words. I don't mind writing swear words because they're around forever. And also, if somebody sees that signature in the future, they won't know the person made me write that. They'll just think I decided to write that. So I like to keep it clean, keep it polite. Um, but yeah, that's it, really. So if, if you could, if I could write anything on something someone brought up, like have you, do you have a bus? Um, I will write this on someone's item if they give me a blank. I might um, write, get a life, spend your money on something more important. <laughs> <laughs> I'll oh, be college, for goodness sake. <laughs> Okay, what have we got? You, you, you mentioned Leprechaun. I'm yeah. curious. Um, do you recall how old why. you were when Leprechaun came out? I don't want to call what year that was. It was 1992, I think. You were was when we got the script. Still rather young at the yeah. time. What, what was your experience working on a horror film? Um, um, well, prior to that, I'd done like, Star Wars, Willow. So stuff that showed me as a goodie. And when the script came through, I was like, had no work at all. I was kind of desperate, and um, 
I was like, oh, this is a villain. This is really cool. It's a horror movie, so I get to diversify and not be seen as this kind of good, goody kind of character playing Willow, Wicket, or stuff like that. So I looked at the script and thought, this sounds fun. Originally, Leprechaun was supposed to be a kid's scary movie with no blood and gore. It was just kind of comic book violence, which is the reason that if you've seen the film, who would admit they've seen it? Anyone? Look at that, just only two or three people. I've seen it. Okay, well done. <laughs> very brave of you. Um, so you'll notice the, um, the kind of colours were very bright, the costume was bright coloured. It's supposed to look kind of comic book like. Um, but then when the studio got hold of it, they said, okay, we can make this an R rated film, we like it. And we shot for three weeks doing gory inserts. So the scene with the pogo sticking to death. So that'll mean nothing to the people who haven't seen it. And now they can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. And the, the scene where I kind of chased the cop down and killed him, they were all added in to make the film an R-rated production. So it was a kind of very soft R in the end. Um, so that was it. That was how it got started. And then that one was a success. They wanted to make another one. I said, yes, I was still out of work. And then I went back and made another one. And, and we ran out of places, so we went and sent it to space. We did Vegas space. We did space, no, we did the hood. We did space then the hood twice. <laughs> we were desperate at the end. <laughs> and I remember speaking to Ron Howard. I was in LA doing these films. I said, hey Ron, I'm back over. Should we, should we meet up? He said, what are you doing? So I'm making a leprechaun film. He said, I'll read another one. He said, but don't worry, because my, uh, my daughter's boyfriend loves those movies, so I guess if, it, if he likes it, they must be good. And that was it, got his approval for Vegas. <laughs> so that was Leprechaun, yeah. I mean, it's there, I'm not ashamed of it at all because they were fun to do at the time because it was extreme performance. Um, I could establish the character, do what I wanted to do, do a bad Irish accent, offend Irish people all over the world. <laughs> and, uh, and that was it, and it's one of those movies that people kind of still enjoy today, I mean, they're kind of sad, I mean, as these people will attest. Because it's a very unique sort of niche market, isn't it, really? I don't know, Mike Myers kind of brought it back up when he did it. No, they did, didn't they? <laughs> the, yeah. Yeah. While we were filming the, uh, one of the films, we did a little kind of tribute back to that. I got a torch under knife face and was going, ah, I'm a leprechaun. <laughs> in the same way they did in the movie. Fantastic. What else we have here in the audience? The difference, or I'd, I'd be interested to know if you remember the difference in filming Return of the Jedi and then the two Ewok movies. Did it seem different to you at the time that they're radically different movies? Oh, they're pretty different because one was for cinema, one was TV. So the scale of production was much, much smaller. And also for me, they'd read about the, um, the Ewok suit. So on the um, second Ewok movie, I think it was, I could move my eyes. So I had a mechanism on my wrist with a cable, and inside were like pupils that could go left and right, but I moved my wrist. So you want, if you watch the movie carefully, when Wicked looks around, I start doing that as well. <laughs> that was about it. It became second nature in the end. Hmm. Um, yeah, and so the productions were smaller. We filmed a lot of it on George Lucas's Skywalker Ranch. Um, so some of the scenery you see is the ranch. Um, yeah, that was it. I mean, still pretty, pretty impressive experience, though. A lot of money for a TV show back then, because they were holiday specials when they were on ABC. Yeah, I think they're nice. I mean, are they canon now? There's arguments about this all the time. Hmm. I've always wondered the same thing, whether they're canon. I think they are, personally. I loved them growing up. I, I remember uh, recording it on my VHS tape in the 80s, and uh, uh, as the miniseries format, I watched those over and over. Those were fantastic. I don't know. Ewoks get a little flack sometimes, but uh, I was a fan. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ewoks, um, it's turned around a bit now, people don't dislike them as much as they used to. No, it's come back around, I think, as far as uh, they, 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 they get a lot more credit than they used to. I think it's because the generation that grew up as children with the Ewoks were now adults, and uh, we liked them because we were kids. Yeah, that's nice, this. they're still producing merch, uh, merch with um, Wicket on today, you know, I still find that I haven't got a mic left. It's nice. Thank you. Hello, two questions if I may. 
Kyle Kilmer, you spent a lot of time with him in the Bulldog. What was he like, and how was it working with him? And the second question is, are there any actors uh, like yourself that you've kept in touch with, developed friendships long-term, and worked with um, some amazing people? So I'm just curious. Well, Dan's definitely one of the people I've kept in touch with uh, because, um, yeah, throughout Willow, he was a great mentor. He kept, kept me laughing, kind of kept me going because he's a very grueling experience making a film. You know, in difficult conditions, it's raining, it's cold, and you just want to give up, and Val was there with a joke, with the words of encouragement, like, come on, keep going, let's do this. Uh, so yeah, he was, he was fun, lovely guy to hang out with. And you know, I've kept in touch ever since. You know, the only time we mainly see each other now is at Comic Cons, and now he's not so well, it's, it's, he gets, it's hard for him to get to these events, but yeah, we're very much in touch, and, um, and I've supported him, and he's supported me, so uh, it's been good. Um, apart from that, you end up working with people for a long, long time. You know, a lot of the actors on Harry Potter, it's a similar experience. You know, become quite close with them, and then you go your separate ways on other projects. Sometimes you work with them again on another film, or see them at a con somewhere. So yeah, we shared a, a kind of wonderful experience all together, and you've got something you can kind of can relate to. In the same way as a kind of army unit goes through stuff together, I'm not comparing us to kind of soldiers, but you know, you go through a lot working late in difficult conditions and support each other. And so when you come together again, you've got this shared kind of experience that you'll always have. Um, so, uh, but individual particular people, um, who would that be? I mean, it is mainly Val, really, and, and of course Mark and Harrison from Jedi, you know, they still remember me as the little 11 year old kid. And so does George. I think when George sees me, he still thinks I'm that. He's surprised. <laughs> Whoa, you know, you've got grey hair. And I'm here, well, I'm 53 now, George. <laughs> I'm not 11 anymore. <laughs> he, I think he looks at me like it's kind of like a little experiment. Like, oh, you did well. <laughs> and I'm well. But he's been a great mentor and encouraged my career throughout. He's been fabulous. Yeah. Really good guy. The key, good. So speaking of the holiday special, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, <laughs> the original holiday special from 1978, have you seen yeah, it? What were, yeah. your, what were your thoughts on Be Truthful? You know, I hadn't seen it, but there was a documentary on the plane that um, kind of went through the process of it and showed various clips. So I'd seen none of it before I'd heard about it, but oh my gosh, it was a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, what about the whole Wookiee kind of porn sequence? What's that all about? That's really weird, messed up stuff. Um, but yes, it's a, an interesting experiment, which I think kind of inspired the idea for Return of the Ewok. Has anyone heard about that? Yeah. That was a film we made whilst making Return of the Jedi. Again, it was like a short show before main features in cinemas, but I think the thinking behind that initially was kind of keep the interest between movies again, which that's why the holiday special was devised, was to keep people interested in Star Wars while they made a new one. And I think Return of the Ewok was a similar kind of experiment in that area. Again, never finished, but now it's the stuff of legends, the stuff of convention discussion, as we're doing now. But I'm glad it was never released properly, because to me, that's the kind of beauty of it. We see little clips now and again, um, and it's kind of scratch the film that you do see, and it's temporary dialogue, temporary sound. But it's a real little kind of treasure trove of guest appearances, guest star cameos, and stuff like that. Yes, wonderful. John Fred. Hello. Hi, I'm John. Hello, John. Um, is there any cool stories you can share from your time on the Harry Potter set? Oh boy. So I spent about 12 years on those films. Uh, wow. I'm the only person who have ridden the Segway around Privet Drive. And around the Great Hall as well. <laughs> so I rode my Segway everywhere around studios and uh, yeah, I, I do hold that title. Um, cool stories, let me think. Uh, let's see now. Oh, I made a thing that never came out. Well, they gave us um, video recorders, cameras, and said, right, I want you to make a diary of your experience on the, on the movie. So I think me, Dan Rubin, and Emma had one as well. So I just drove around the studio on my Segway filming for a bit. Then got bored of that and decided I would make, um, you remember MTV Cribs? Yeah. So I did one of my trailer as Ripper. So welcoming people into my crib, showing around the trailer and how actually naff it was. I mean, you think it's all glamour working on these things, it's horrible. It's like chemical toilet, 
nasty smelly thing. No running water. So I did this whole kind of MTV Cribs thing. And I edited it and um, sent them, gave them the camera back and they must have looked at this voice and thinking, what on earth have you done here? <laughs> but I've got the kind of original edit of that which will never come out, unfortunately. I may show it at a convention one day. And it's fun. Just grip hook showing uh, the audience around his crib, his trailer. Then I go out and show you my rides as well, which are my Segway outside. Show off on that for a bit, as grip hook again. You can picture this, it's pretty crazy. We have to impress Mr. Davis here at the ICC Con so we can uh, maybe premiere that uh, film here one year in the future. Ah, we could do that, yeah. I'm just gonna leak out to Warner Brothers. Leak to ICC, we got you. <laughs> Let's see, who else has a question? Hi, my name is Brock. Hey, Brock. How you doing, boss? I'm just wondering how film has changed. For you, uh, they started with practical effects, and then Harry Potter probably had some green screen and things like that. How has that changed throughout the years, from when you started to? Well, you know what? It was all practical in the beginning, but then it kind of went all digital when, when they could do that, and then I'm seeing it going back the other way again now. There's more practical stuff on films nowadays, which is quite nice. Because as an actor, it becomes very isolating. When you just put in a room with blue screen everywhere and they say, imagine this, imagine that. Remember that video we just showed you? That's gonna be over there. You have to picture it all in your head. But yes, yeah, so I prefer you know working with practical things, but I'm not bad at working with imaginary stuff as well. It's a bit like when you used to be a kid, if you can remember. You used to imagine the stuff in front of you. You have to go back to that way of thinking. You have to, if you believe it's there, then the audience will also believe it's there. It's like when we went back to the Willow series again. The other actors were saying to me, how do you do this work? How do we work in this world? So well, you've got to believe that's where you are right now. You've got to picture it in your head. And if you believe you're there, the audience will also join you on that kind of journey of suspending their disbelief for the moment of the production. So yeah, um, I'm trying to think of some examples of stuff. Um, remember on episode one, um, so George said one day, we're on an entire stage of blue screen, he said, right, I want you to grab that creature over there. So which creature? He said, well, it's stood there now, it's a huge EOP, a big dinosaur. Grab its reins, lead it into the middle of the stage, then, um, then walk off. But first of all, the reins aren't on it, you've got to hook, hook them over its neck. So they give me these leather reins, which I'm going to have to walk out in the middle of nowhere to a thing that's not there, hook it over its neck, and then walk to the middle. So it's all in my head, and then it was left to iron over to try and make it work. But as long as I was believing it, then their work wasn't so difficult, you know. If I'd have messed up and not believed I was actually seeing a creature, dragging a creature, it wouldn't have looked right in the finished production. But it did end up in the movie, but it's kind of clever because they kind of put it in another place altogether, a background in a hangar. You just see me grabbing the creature and leading it on. Yeah, it's fun. There we go. I'm sure we've got somebody else who has a fantastic question. Oh, right here in front. Well, he's making his way up now. Have you ever been to Nashville before? Is this Nashville? No. Is this your first time in Nashville? Nashville. Do you have any plans for while you're here? Anything fun you want to do? I'm going to go to Dollywood. Dollywood is fantastic. Is it? What is it? So, <laughs> I, well, he's saying don't do it. He's saying don't do it. I absolutely, I grew up in Tennessee. I don't live in Tennessee anymore. I live in Florida. Last time I saw you was in Orlando at Celebration. And uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I love Dollywood. We used to have season passes. Everybody loves Dolly Parton. Oh, I'm saying, so. is she going to be there? She could be. What's she she could be. I hope so. She, she knows, finds out she knows I'm going. I want her at the gate. So absolutely. tickets, please. <laughs> Welcome to my park. Is it in our garden or is it just kind of? So it's a back garden going. Not on. exactly, but it, it feels like it sometimes. There's there's fantastic rides and uh, I used to love Blazing Fury. It, Blazing it's still Fury. there. It's a it's a really antiquated roller coaster. Oh, it's it's very I don't like that. You would you may not like it. I want to be under the height of it, so I don't I have to go. Did I love that? I don't to act scared. I can just go. I'm sorry, I can't go. Oh. <laughs> so is anything themed on Dolly herself? Oh, it's all themed on Dolly. You can see her uh, a replica of her old schoolhouse and her home and uh, her old church. And uh, it, it's been years since I've been there. I assume all this stuff is still there, right? I might make one of these in England. Do a replica of my old school in my back garden. 
Just charge people to come and have a look at it. <laughs> I'd go. Warwick, 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 where she sings to you and rocks you to sleep. No, that's a roller coaster. Blazing Fury is technically a roller coaster. No. Anything like It's a Small World, my favourite. <laughs> it's a Dolly World, something like that. No, nothing. I should cancel. <laughs> Gatlinburg's nice. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I like um, music. You, you'll, you'll love. I'm, I'm sure you'll make your way downtown uh, Nashville at some point. It's, uh, it's it's fantastic, especially if you love country music like I, like I don't. Is there anyone out John Denver here? I mean, I'm sure he's Any been here before. Answer? I'm sure he's I'm sure he's been to Nashville before. <laughs> Maybe. Come on. Okay, enough about Tennessee. Let's get on to that. <laughs> I've never been here before, but that's it. That's what I'm doing while I'm here. We're gonna we're gonna show show you a good time in Nashville. So look out on my um. Twitter or X, you'll see me at Dollywood, looking terrified and disappointed at the same time. Why are there so many roller coasters? Thank you. Stay for the night. That's cool. I think the car brings me back leaves at nine. So do I have to wait till it gets dark? Yeah, walk the park at night. Oh, cool. Is that when Dolly's there as well? So no one knows she's there. Does anyone know Dolly? Who's met Dolly Park in the room? My stage manager in the back has met Dolly Parton. You helped her career? Helped decorate her house for Christmas. Her house? Oh really? Well you put a Christmas tree up for her. Oh wow. Did she come and inspect it? Go oh. This is to Rachel. So did she like your decorations? Oh, she loved it. She loved it when we were there. She's always really Did she go, oh, honey, that's great? Did she talk like that? <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Oh. That's a good claim to fame, isn't it? To say you decorate Dolly Park's house. I had someone put a Christmas tree up for me once. It saved me getting the cherry picker out for one year anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so now they've got that claim to fame saying they put my Christmas tree up. The cherry picker sounds fun. It's not. I'm oh, terrified okay. of heights. Oh, understood. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's get a real question down front. <laughs> so in your book, you talk about you don't eat a lot of local foods when you're traveling mm -hmm. because food poisoning and such. But when you're somewhere, have you been... <clears throat> tempted to try something and what would you like to eat that you were a little scared to? It's interesting he says, I'm going to barbecue tonight. Is that going to be okay? Yeah. What should I buy? Don't avoid anything. Barbecue's fantastic in my opinion. Okay. Get it out I'll do that. Hot chicken. I'm not a hot chicken fan, personally. I I don't recommend it. I, I I'm never a, I'm never a fan the next morning. <laughs> I like hot things, but I, it's not it's a flavor thing for me. No, I like some the flavor. cool chicken tonight. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, the I worst thing I've ever eaten. Who saw the series Idiots Abroad? Oh yeah. So Carl made me eat stuff because I was the only member of the team that wasn't sick on the journey through India and China. He said, right, we're going to test you out. I'm gonna go to a street food place in China and get you some food. So he brought me some um, lung of a sheep, uh, head of a rabbit, and made me eat this stuff. It's For me, it wasn't the flavor, it was what it was. Yeah. He went for when I got it in my mouth, and he said, that's a sheep's lung, and he went, <laughs> And then the rabbit, he said, right, chew on that bit there. Then you realize that you can see an eyeball and some teeth still, and it's still the shape of a head. It's like, oh my God. But I wasn't actually sick, there was a lot of, if you go on the internet and search that on YouTube, you can enjoy me looking ill. <laughs> was, I mean, seeing somebody do that is actually quite funny, isn't it? Unless it makes you do the same. It's like a chain reaction. I used to happen in school assembly. We were in an assembly and somebody was sick in the morning. Then somebody in the front row would be sick of the assembly. Then it would kind of go back like dominoes. Somebody else would smell it, then they were sick as well. It would be terrible. 
How do we get onto this subject, David? I, 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 I told you we were just going to have a conversation. Just out. Boy, are we. <laughs> what, what type of food do you like? What, you, what, what, what do you do like, like to eat? Chicken. Chicken? I was saying to my girlfriend, I said, um, as if I was reincarnated, I don't want to come back as a chicken. Because everything wants to eat chicken, doesn't it? Everything. Humans, dogs, cats, everything's after chickens. Why is that? I assume they're delicious. I assume they're delicious. Yes, they're, yeah. I mean, it's chicken. It, it, everything tastes like it tastes like chicken. There's a saying: it tastes yeah. like chicken. So, chicken must be a special gift. Special gift to the world. <laughs> the gift of chicken. So, what do I like eating? I like eating chicken. Chicken. Do you have a, 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 like? Do you like a, like um, chicken masala, or do you have a favorite type of good a chicken? I like dish? a chicken curry. Chicken Very curry. Mild, mild curry. Nice creamy chicken curry is nice. I like that. A nice traditional roast chicken, like the British roast, Sunday roast, roast potatoes, vegetables, chicken, cranberry sauce, very nice. Beautiful. Oh yeah, everyone should have some watering. It's lunchtime. It's lunchtime. It's lunchtime. Uh, what time is this We have a few more minutes. We have a few more minutes for some more questions if we have any. These better be the best ones. I'm not These are the rubbish now, guys. It's been pretty crap so far. So up your game. Up your game now. Bring your A game. Yeah, no pressure. Uh, hello, my name is Evan. Uh, I'm from the Spice Runners Lounge, along with uh, George here from the Hyperdrive YouTube channel. The question we always ask our, our guests on the show is, what's your favorite Star Wars show? And please don't say Phantom Menace. Just favorite kidding. Star Wars movie or show? Favorite movie, sorry. Movie? Don't say Phantom Menace, so thanks for that. <laughs> what is my favorite Star Wars? It depends. If you've been a bit moody, I think it's Empire, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good movie. It's fantastic. Because it's hard to have a middle movie like that, and it did the job. Then Jedi nicely rounds it off. Bit of cuteness, bit of action, bit of fun, bit of comedy. But yeah, I think Empire's one of the favourites. But I liked Episode 7 as well. And all J.J. was pretty good as a director. You know, to come back into something like that and do what he did was clever. Force Awakens was great. Yeah, I liked it, yeah. I love BB-8 as well. Just watching the puppeteers perform him. Well, how's this going to work? And uh, it did work very well. I loved it. Yeah, it's cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Was that the whole question? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was easy. Yeah. It was easy. What's his YouTube thing called? Hyperdrive. Hyperdrive. Clever. I see what you've done there. All right, thank you. <laughs> Hyperdrive. <laughs> Good. Everyone listen to my... Who listens to Hyperdrive or watches it? Anyone? There he is. That's your audience, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I know these guys. So oh, you know, you have to watch. <laughs> so he doesn't count at all. We've got one member over here. Well, that's that's it. Oh, he's back. He's back there with the microphone in the back. Uh, have you ever met with another actress who's walking on the street or something? Have I met with another what? Actor. Actor walking on the street. Like run into them just walking down the street? You didn't know you were going to meet them and there they are. Well, I wouldn't recognize them anyway because I don't recognize anyone. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. It was an actress and I can't even remember her name now. Because I want to tell you a story about not recognizing someone. She was in Harry Potter. She played Trelawney. Who was that? Uh, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm chatting away at a premiere of something else, like an opening night. Turn away with this woman, Emma Thompson. She's talking about um, Sylvester Stallone being a fat, life's too short. Oh, that's nice, cool. So I had this whole conversation with her. All right, yeah, see you later, bye. And my wife was standing listening, and she said, you don't know who that was, do you? I said, no idea. It was Emma Thompson, you worked with her. Oh, okay. I'm oh, terrible, really bad, really, really bad. Yeah, she probably went away, who was that? Can he make it? <laughs> we, we started this discussion lying about how good we are with people's faces and names uh, to finally tell the truth in the end. So I think that's fine, a good place to kind of uh, call it a day for, for, the, for the day. Unfortunately, I'd love to sit here and do this all day long, but you're going to be here. Where can the, uh, the guests uh, find you and get an autograph? Where can they find me? I'm in a little room 
secreted away somewhere down the corridor. No idea. We've got maps. Get the ICCCon app if you don't have it. There are yeah. maps and there are schedules and there's everything that you need if you don't have it already to enjoy the fun, fantastic weekend. And one more quick thing. Sure. Before you do any more promotion. Um, I've got jet lag. Anyone else want my signature today? Because I'll go back there for 10 minutes just for you. I gotta get that weird. Anyone else? <laughs> so I'm going to go back just for him in a minute. That's great. And then I can go eat some chicken and go to bed. <laughs> Good. So I'll see you in my room somewhere in this building in a few minutes. Thanks everyone, it's been fun. Thank you. Round of applause for Mr. Warren Gillis. Thank you. Cheers.